Hello, hello, happy Thursday. How you doing? I am Janelle, creator of She Exists and founder for She Exists Network, She Exists Publications. How are you doing? I'm sorry about these technical difficulties, but it's StreamYard, but you know, we always find a solution. So I have Dana Hammond straight from India. This is a powerful, amazing woman. She has a story and a story that no one really talks about. It's a story that we all need to spread and share awareness. Sex trafficking, human trafficking, all these traffickings, but all these other abuse, abduction, abandonment, we need to start sharing awareness. But Dana is here, successful than ever before, and she is here to talk about her story. She is very beautiful, very intelligent, and you know what? She's not taking no for an answer. She is here, and she is ready to accomplish so much. I am bringing you the amazing, precious Dana. Hey, Dana, how are you? Hey, Janelle, I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in from where you are. I have Roslyn here. Just thank you so much for sharing your story. You have been at a powerhouse. I know I want to share all this other amazing stuff that you have going on, but I want to say thank you for that uh, trafficking tour that you did with other women that was successful. I mean, you're a trailblazer. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to step back, have you um, just let everybody know who you are. Take us back to your journey of when you remember being in the train station in India. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Janelle. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dana Priyanka Hammond, and I am ex excited to be on the show. Thank you so much, Janelle, for having me on the show. I so appreciate you and your time. And um, so what I would like to share with you guys is my journey of being human trafficked as a little child. I was four years old and um, I was abducted at the age of four in India. So as you all know, well, that's why I don't know my birth family uh, because I was abducted under their nose and I was brought to America. I actually came about, uh, arriving at the orphanage and uh, I don't know what took place or what happened. And I just literally felt like it was God. Um, of course, at the age of four, you're not gonna know that. You just uh, don't understand the severity uh, of, of what you're going through. I just recognize uh, that I was constantly feeling sleepy and it was unnatural sleep and, um, what was happening? I was definitely very afraid. I can tell you that I was very afraid, uh, not knowing, uh, what was happening to me, uh, wh where about I was going. Um, uh, you know, in a little four year old mind, you're like, uh, you, <laughs> you, you don't know because you would think, uh, you would have your mom and dad, grandpa, grandma, somebody, uh, to take care of you. Uh, that is, sheltering you, covering you, protecting you, but not having that alone and just having this whereabout, like you're in the hands of a stranger and um, you're put in the destiny of the stranger's hand wherever that he deemed to choose. And that was my life. That was the beginning part of my story of India. And so, that's how I went from that to then arriving at the orphanage. And I really thank, thank God, I thank God that I made it alive. Uh, of course, he had a purpose for me, as you all can see, because I'm alive still, breathing still, thriving like no other. And it's all nothing but him, honestly. <laughs> so um, I arrive at the orphanage and it was nothing but God. 
just spare me or something. And my story is, uh, I really believe I was adoption trafficked, um, but I honestly won't completely know my full background story until I go on a journey to finding my birth family. And as I am speaking to you guys now, I am telling you this because I'm actually connected to a program in India right now um, who have been, who I've started the journey to start looking for my birth family, but they kind of had to put a hold on it because of the fact, you know, there's the COVID and it really takes somebody to go out in the field, um, going and finding documents or something something where they can find some kind of clue. Okay, what happened to this little girl? Um, can we find something? Maybe the orphanage is hiding. And we all know that a lot of companies or whatever that looks like saving angels, they are not such saving angels. And I'm not saying that all adoption uh, orphanages or all of them are like that, but let's just face it majority of international ad adoptees have been adoption trafficked and mo majority of them don't know that. And I'm not saying it happened to all of them. I'm not saying that. So I'm putting that into clarity. I'm putting into clarity uh, because not everybody's story is the same, but I am determined for the fact that uh, I will find my birth family somehow. Uh, because I was destined to, and I will find out the truth. But this book, uh, my new book that I just um, released and published, it will be coming out on June 18th. So everybody will be able to purchase the book, but you can pre-order your book on Amazon and Barnes and Noble as of right now, as we speak. But um I wrote this story so I can put awareness out there. I can let people know what really took place in my life. And, and because I have found my purpose and my destiny to tell my story, I made up my mind that I will not stop until the day I die to tell my story because God had called me to tell my story. And I'm telling my story so I can let people know who are trafficked, who mm. have been going through abuse with adoption, or who have been placed in the orphanage or the foster home system like I have, that they have purpose too. They exist too, and their life matters too. Because through the journey, I'm gonna share a tidbit with you guys. When I first got adopted here in America, I was mistreated um, by my adoptive parents, my first adoptive parents, and I was abused. And neglection and abandonment was a heavy, heavy blanket on me. And you talk about me not existing, I completely felt like a ghost, like I was a walking dead zombie walking and nobody seeing me, recognizing me. So I love the title, See She Exists, because that really represents what my background story talks about, where I can speak to the women and the men who have gone through that just like I have, and who's still going through that just like I have. But I can let you know you're breathing for a reason. You're still waking up every day for a reason. That lets you know God has a plan for you. Just like I had to discover God has a plan for me. God has a plan and you mean something. You are somebody, you are someone for a reason. If I, it took me a long time to discover that for myself, well, so can you. And I'm telling you that I'm looking at the screen, whoever you are, I'm looking at the screen and telling you, you matter. You are important. You are living and breathing, not because God doesn't have a plan for you, not because you don't have purpose, it's because you do have purpose. There's a reason why you exist as well. There's a reason why, because you have a story. 
you have a testimony just like I, I do. I'm, who am I? Just because I went through a unique background, I survived where mo most of the people have not survived through human trafficking, whether it's sex or adoption or whatever. Human slavery is real. It's a real big thing. And then just going from that to then abuse with my adoption and then having to grow up in shelters and foster home, it really takes a lot of strength to uh, experience all that trauma just to finally come to the place of healing, mm -hmm. wholeness, mental wellness, and mm -hmm. just to be attacked in your character and say, and people accusing you, you to be mentally ill. And if you have that experience, just like I'm experiencing that, just like I have been experiencing that, please stand up and know who you are and uh, fight against that. Because I really believe in fighting for people's rights and what matters in their lives, especially mine. Wow, Dana, it's just, um, you know, talking to you and, and feeling, um, I won't even say pain, I feel release, you know? I feel like you're just releasing um, just education, you know, you're releasing your purpose, you know, and I can feel that from, from where you are. But I, I have a couple of questions. Sure. Can you walk us through um, what that looked like? Now, I know that you probably can't remember from being a young kid, but walk us through those emotional um, transition, so to speak. Um, honestly, I do share what that looked like in my book. So yeah. people really do have a real good treat when they purchase my book. Mm -hmm. um, because this book, when I wrote it, it did not take overnight. Right. It, it did not take a month. It did not take a year. I've been in yeah. the process of writing this story of mine since 2008. Okay. And I'm finally done. And the reason why it took me that long is because I had to go through a process of healing just mm -hmm. to tell my story so I don't barf all over people. I don't right. just spill myself out and and mm -hmm. just sound crazy. You yeah, know, absolutely. I had to go through the process mm -hmm. of healing. Mm -hmm. and, and you can't ever skip the process. Correct. And it was really, really hard for me to even explain the details of what I went through. And I'm going to tell you what I went through. It felt extremely scary. I was very vulnerable as a human being, as a little child. I, I felt cramped up. I was constantly tired because I knew chloroform was placed over my mouth. Uh, um, I was scared, extremely scared. I just didn't understand why me? Why did I have to go through that when I longed to be with my family? All I wanted was to be healthy, grow up in a healthy childhood and not having that upbringing just made me mm -hmm. even more vulnerable, made me lose my identity, made me lose myself. And it all started in India when I was in that rice sack, when that stranger took me on his back like a sack of potatoes, not really, not knowing what, what was taking place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't... I mean, can you imagine if it, if you were a mom and or dad and you really love your child, like how how would that mother feel? How would that father feel if that was your child? Janelle, how would you feel if your child all of a sudden disappeared? Can't even imagine. And do you know that that's why it's so great even now here in America? All those things that 
have been taking place so much in children and being that are being taken advantage of in India and other countries. Now it's happening like crazy here in America. Yeah. And you can't negate the fact that COVID has uh, come in place, but you can't make that disappear. This billion dollar industry, you can't make that disappear. That's a, the COVID just came in place to cover up, masking up what's taking place still. Has anybody fixed the situation? Has anybody beat this giant? What about the vulnerable children that are experiencing this? What about the young women? What about the teenagers? What about the untouchables? That's the other title that they're called, the untouchable. You know, my heart goes out for them because just because I didn't experience the full journey and I got saved does not mean that that wasn't going to be me. That was me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm that Sally Sue or whoever it is. And I feel like I'm that their voice because they don't have that voice mm -hmm. because I went through it. And the, and, 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 the extreme fear that comes over you and not knowing that you can move or what's getting ready to happen. What if the thinking that th this person might kill me mm -hmm. being cramped up in, in a fetal position because I didn't know if I felt like if I moved, yeah. well, what was this bad man going to do to me? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I, I had a sense of awareness as a four-year-old uh, that Correct. came to me. and you can't explain that. Kids yeah. are smart. They can mm -hmm. pick up on things. Mm -hmm. Kids are smart. So, so um, thank you for sharing this. Um, I want to dive in a little bit because, of course, um, you are definitely sharing some um, trauma as far as what you had, emotional awareness, just being young. But Dana, I want to take a, a minute right now. I want to take a deep breath, actually, because um, so much. Look at what you have accomplished, you know, and 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 I and I'm not saying that to be funny where okay this happened, but you have accomplished so much. You're very successful. How how after the healing process, how did you how were you able to spin this around and and defeat this? Please share. Well, I I feel I haven't totally arrived because I know I haven't. Um, okay. I still have a long ways to go. Um, I believe in small steps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I believe in you cannot complain about your small places. Okay. And how did I get here to even there? Because I took it one day at a time. Okay. I was determined. I made up my mind that I wanted something different. And once I discovered my real true identity and I, how I discovered my true identity is when I heard the voice of the Lord tell me my first identity. He said, Dana, first of all, and this was in 2008. He said, Dana, first of all, you are an author. All before I even became an author, he told me that. He said, I want you to write this story and you are an author. And when I had this back and forth conversation with him, I said, but Laura, I don't know what to write about. He said, yes, you do. You know exactly what to write about and what you, I want you to do. Yeah. I said, but I don't know how to start. I don't know where to begin. He said, just take the word, take word and start writing. I said, but what if I look stupid before people? You're not going to. That's what he told me. He said, I will provide the right people when it's time, my time, not your time. It's my time. And then he, there, there's a word he gave me. Mm -hmm. If you are willing and obedient, you mm -hmm. shall eat good of the land. Just be willing, Dana, and I will take care of the rest. That's all I need from you. Just be obedient. If you are willing and obedient, eat the good of the land. I said, okay. 
I hear you. Because there's nothing more that scares me more but to stand before my Lord and Savior when the day that I do die onto the next level. And he asked me, what have you done with your talent? What have you done with your gift? When I asked you, when I called you to be an author, when I called you to tell your story before people, and you knew this story was very important to me. Yes, it was your life. Yes, you went through it. Yes, you went through hell, but I wanted you to put it on pen and paper, write it on paper. So you, the whole world can hear about your story. Yeah. And I said, Lord, well, I don't know why my story is that important to you, but whatever it is, yeah. it's not none of my business to find out, but it's my business to be obedient. And I just want to be obedient to you and I'll do it. And so it's a, it's a small steps. It's a small process. It's a journey that became a big process that became successful. This is a 2008 journey that finally birthed out my baby. And I went through some warfare over this because of the healing I had to go through. Mm. PTSD. Okay, let's talk about the trauma. When you talk about your story, how can you truly heal as a human being? Can you really heal? A lot of people, you know, don't heal because they have a hard time telling their story. But there's a way that seems right unto a man, but in the end there's destruction because they don't allow God carry, to carry them through so they can heal. They can heal. And the, in order to heal, you have to allow yourself to go through the process. Why? Because you're worth it. The process hurts. Value hurts. Being purified as in the finer's gold, it hurts. So you can be that bright shining star, it hurts. And that's why I'm not able to barf all over people when I tell my story now. And I wrote it on paper. So Dana, oh, this is just um, deep, you know, um, it's very deep. When you wrote your story, did you know that you were healing writing that? Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. So walk us through that. Walk us through that process. It hurt like hell. Mm. <laughs> it hurt like hell. And um, could nobody else go through it but me. Yeah. And nobody else understood. Why? Because they weren't Dana. They didn't mm. understand Dana's heart. They didn't understand what lied inside my heart and this burden these baggages I carried inside of me that was so heavy laden. Um, that's why I look at people even now who shame me of my character. Talk about my character like a dog. I'm mm -hmm. like, excuse me, you don't even know me from Adam. You don't even know half of what I went through and why right. I'm going through what I went through. Mm -hmm. And I'm a way better person now than I was back yeah. then. Why? Yeah. Because grace was with me. Mm. Grace carried me. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the only understanding person that was here in my life mm -hmm. was the only very one that told me, write this story. Yeah. And then boom, when, when warfare came, yeah. I thought that book like... <laughs> like this, mm. and I thought I was done, it was gone. It was yeah. gone. Mm -hmm. And when I was attacked in my book, it was placed in the court system back in mm -hmm. 2010, 2008. Mm -hmm. And then that's when the, uh, the Lord re reminded me and he told me, Moses, use what you got, look around you. Yeah, yeah. Even though you have nothing, you feel like you have nothing that is a moneymaker, mm -hmm. I guarantee you 
I place something in your hands that is a money maker. You want to be mm. successful? Mm. You want to be successful? Look around you. I place you in this apartment. You carry nothing but clothes on your back and the stuff you have. I gave you something that is more valuable that is a money maker. And I will make you successful in that. He said, Moses, use what you got. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. And I said, but Lord, I, man, you know, Lord, I went through this. I, I It distraughted me. How could this person do this to me? How? How? They attacked me. My book. I'm birthing this book out. How can this person do th this to me? And then all of a sudden I lose my whole book. I was being obedient to you. I was almost done with the book. What happened? I don't want to restart all over again. Yeah. You don't have to. God said, you don't have to. He says, you remember how the enemy attacked you in your book that I called you for and placed it in the court system? He says, start off from there. You can start brand new from what you have left over. I said, oh yeah, that's true. I didn't even think about that. That's why I told him, oh my God, you're right. You are absolutely right. How did I not think about when the enemy meant for the bad, you are now turning around for the good and says, you don't have to start all over from scratch. You can start off from what is left over. Yeah. And what, sometimes what is your leftover? God takes your leftover and makes it big, cleans it up. Yeah. So that was my next process. He cleaned my story up. Mm -hmm. He took my leftover. I rebuilt. God sent me one person said, are you ready to write your book? I said, yes, God, if this is you, let me restart all over again. I'm telling you, it looked like crap. When, when I took the leftover that I did have that was submitted into the court papers and I have that court paper there, I grabbed it, restarted from scratch. This person helped me put it together. It looked like junk. But if it wasn't for God sending me the right people along the way, I wouldn't have gotten to where I'm at. Now I'm just considered to be an author. Um, I'm, you know, getting ready to gain speaking engagements. I'm getting ready to go out there um, once the COVID lifts to do a documentary film. And, and then after that person, I met another person who helped me to be my language barrier. Mm -hmm. And she helped me each chapter up my language barrier because as you all know people from international they have broken english and yeah even though i grew up in here in america you know grammatical error in english is just really not my forte still yeah you know you can take a girl out of india but you can't take india out of the girl i guess that's what happened right, right. right. So, so that's what happened now here i am several years later I start tear the veil. Once my book got was finished editing, almost got done editing. I meet Dr. Princess Fumi and I yes. meet the visionary ladies. I get to be part of this group of ladies to be a voice. Yes. Yeah. To become part of my story. I said, I know where to what to do. This is my platform that I can just launch off from. And then from there, mm -hmm. I'll just launch off from there and tell my whole story in a book on its own. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. gave me more courage, more strength, what to do is just more training. So I, I end up getting a book with uh, Dr. Princess Fumi called Tear the Veil. I shared parts of this story in a chapter. And now here I am. I'm I finally, the Lord tells me it's time. Dana, it's time. It's time to finish because it's my time. This is my time because I'm telling you it's time. So now abandoned but not forgotten is done and finished because it's time. 
And this is a journey. Know, it, um, this is good stuff because um, you are able to discern. You're discerning and you're listening to what God is saying in the midst of your storm. In the midst of your storm, you're identifying with who's talking to you, you know? And a lot of people get the stop sign when they're not listening to God. Mm -hmm. So you were able to know that it's time. You didn't stop. You didn't crumble. You didn't fold. You stood. Um, walk us through this, this process when, when you knew that it was time. Where, where did you, how did you align yourself to that point? Because, you know, we, we listen to God, but then sometimes we doubt ourselves. And I didn't hear you doubt yourself one bit in this process. Talk about that. Um, I went through doubts. I did. I went through doubts because now, remember now, 2008, all the way to now, that's a long time. Okay. And um, somewhere in between, I stopped. And there's a reason why for a year, two years, I would not work on this book because um, it's because I still had to go through another phase of healing or it's because I completely felt so distraught within myself that um, all my hard work was done. And this is this yeah. is my baby. This is my baby. Yeah. It's not just my baby. It's my story. It's my livelihood. That's it's how right. I look. Because yeah. it, the reason why it's my livelihood is because it's my, it's my life experience. It's my story. And if God wants me to share my personal story, and be vulnerable before people. Yeah. It's gonna matter yeah. to me. It's gonna matter because, um, yeah. however I get looked at, people have made me feel like, you know, it's not. I I I, I just shouldn't do it. It's I'm not worth it. And so when when feelings yeah. come in. Uh, emotions come in they really mess you up and you have to really make up your mind that you won't allow people get in the way of your purpose and your destiny you won't allow your emotions and feelings to get in the way of your purpose and destiny and my emotions oftentimes have gotten in the way because I'm like oh I quit I give up I've, I've literally given up like literally to the teeth the next thing I know, I will hear him saying, Dana, I've given you a break for a year. What are you going to do? And it's, it's like he won't allow me to quit. Yeah. And it's like that little nudge, like, come on, mm -hmm. move it. Mm -hmm. You can do it. You can do mm -hmm. it. Um, <clears throat> even right now, uh, even though I've matured more, um, it really matters who I link myself up with because those who I link myself up with, they I deal with a lot of jealousy, a lot of envy, a lot of people who want to attack my character. And I actually, the funny part is before I even finished this book up and I knew I was getting ready to uh, do that, I actually went through that um, before the COVID hit, and yeah. and um, I've been called mental. I've been yeah. called, uh, because of PTSD. I've been mm -hmm. called uh, unstable. Um, yeah. uh, you know, I have been told that I'm not, you know, pretty much a good person and a good mom, good mm -hmm. human being. Just. Mm -hmm just everything right. you know but you can't allow that to stop you Absolutely. you can't you can't allow and honestly i'm a type of person who say i'd rather be alone than yeah. to be surrounded and attached to the wrong people or to be yeah i don't like yeah. to surround myself with many people you know right. I, really don't. I don't like yeah. to attach myself because of their lack of understanding of me absolutely and, 
I don't expect them to. <laughs> Absolutely. So what you call that is character assassination, you know? Yes. And with that being said, you know, the enemy knows your goals and your dreams more than you know yourself, you know what I mean? And that is, we have to really, those are the whispers, those are the naysayers, those are the ones that are still victims, still victims of their past life. They're still victims of their rejection. So it's like, oh my God, Dana, how could you come forth and tell your story? Because they can't, they can't. See, in order for success to happen, you have to have those mirror moments and you have to have that self-reflection because yeah. you, you are perfect in the sight of God, you know? But we have to know that. We have to know, we have to take the veil off, so to speak, and dive down dirty with self and deal with those issues. And a lot of people do not want to take that risk. You know why? Because it, it takes you back to, to, to the past. It takes you back to the guilt. It takes you back to self-guilt. It takes you back to that resurrection time, which yeah. that's supposed to be the most amazing time of your life because that shows you that you're ready to deal with self. Because what that is, we are a walking time bomb and we don't know it. Yeah. So I say that to say character assassination comes because you're doing something that they only wish that they can do this. They only wish they had the guts to look at the world and say, this happened to me too. Yeah. They're yeah. still living with the cake of making on. Right. Right. And I, I see it as uh, amongst the dead, I became a living and they're still dead because they haven't learned to live. They haven't learned, given themselves a chance to go through the process. They want to skip the process, even though it's painful and they want to have what you have and they don't want to appreciate what you appreciate because you didn't allow yourself to skip the process and you allowed yourself to go through the pain and the hurt and the burden to take all that away. Yes. They don't want to go through the hell. Exactly. 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 Well, they don't they don't want to confront what they're dealing with because yeah. it takes a lot of time and like you said the healing is the worst part of the process. You yes, know what yes. I mean? So yes. no one wants to relive. That's why it takes guts, Dana, to go back there. It takes guts to literally take this book and say, I'm writing my story. Do you yes. know you do you know at that time and at that purpose and at that process what that looks like for you? Because it only gets worse before it gets better. But mm -hmm. but Dana, I want to say this too. You have such a amazing soul. It is like a breath of fresh air, you know? So I just can't understand anyone looking at you and saying, whoa, you know, your, your, your spirit is so free. And, and I feel that with you. So Dana, take us through the book, the cover. The cover is awesome. First of all, not even the cover, the name. How did you get the name? I got the name from feeling abandoned, being abandoned. Okay, okay. But okay. also when I finally came to a realization later on, I'm not abandoned, mm -hmm. I'm not forgotten. Yeah, yeah. I'm not forgotten. And what really spoke to me is um, Jeremiah 29. Oh my gosh, <laughs> say it. That's what gave me life to my dead soul. Wow. It gave me breath in my nostril. And when God had a prophet to sing that in my life, Ooh. I said, your latter day is greater. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Can you feel yeah. that stuff? <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> And that he has, his thoughts are of good and not yes. of good. Yes, yes. And he has an expected end. 
that's when it finally started. I became living. That's when I started living. Wow. And when I started wow. coming alive. I started discovering even the more of who I am. And I can stand strong even before the naysayers and say, no, you don't know me. That's right. And anything, anybody and anyone who's toxic, I'm getting rid of. And guess what? Even like now, I'm getting rid of a toxic person. Yeah. You know, I, because of because I finally because I know who I am, and I said, can nobody stop me from my purpose with God? Right. Nobody can stop me from my will. Now that I know what my purpose is and my calling is, yeah. I have that much drive, that much more drive to get it done. Because, like mm -hmm. I said, my end goal is to leave this earth with knowing that I told my story, I was obedient. That is yeah. my purpose, is to tell my story. Mm. Wow, I'm so proud of you, Dana. I'm so proud of you. So we, we covered um, pretty much most of the things. You did a great job on this. I, I wanna be able to kind of teach through this process, right? What so what what are some abandon give give me some examples of abandonment triggers, you know, some signs that we can also educate on this show? Sure, I can definitely do that. But before I mention that, I, I, I know you asked me about the cover and I didn't even touch base on that. How in the yes. world did I get yes. that? It was yes. a vision I got. Uh first it was an idea from somebody else, and then I took that idea, I really liked it. And then yeah. um, while I was going through this process, then I was like, man, I really need to do this somehow. Yeah. Even though that person's no longer in my life. Um, and it was just, you know, the one phase that I had to go through, I had to do this. So next yeah. thing I knew, I told my pub publisher, okay, I want this, 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 and this. When they kept getting it wrong, I'm like, no. It, was, it took like about six tries for them to get yeah close to what I want and actually what I really wanted. And right. I decided that little girl you see on the book cover is my uh -huh. infant <laughs> who's a toddler. Oh, wow, that's your baby, wow. <laughs> that's wow. my baby. And um, I, wanted, I wanted even the cover of the book to say something, tell a story. Yeah. And right. Right. the story it right. tells is that what it matches up with my story, which is uh, yeah. abandoned but not forgotten. You're not forgotten. So the Lord's hand reaching out is not forgotten. And he's there. Mm -hmm. His hand is covering you, protecting you, whatever. The little yeah. baby represents me. And she's the close and spitting image of me. So I used her. And I know. I thought it was you. That's why I said, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Okay. I used okay. her. And then there's India. India is on the globe. India has gold. If you look on the cover, it's gold. India is gold. That's because yeah. I'm getting ready to go back to my motherland that has my inheritance that the enemy took from me. Now I'm getting ready to return back to my promised land and uh, return and take back that what the devil stole from me and take back mm -hmm. my inheritance that my family has bestowed right there and it's in india that's why i'm returning back to my motherland um just like moses when he was raised before the egyptians he didn't even know much about his culture with with um the israelites but moses had to learn in his latter days he had to learn so with that said when moses was drifted down the um water just like i got drifted down the train from the rice sack and um, my restored resemblance with Moses because Moses returned back to his promised land and what God called him to do was to rescue his people. God is taking me back to my promised land to rescue my people, to tell my story mm -hmm. and also receive my inheritance that the enemy did not want me to have for my birthright. Yeah. I'm supposed to go back yeah. to my birthright. So that's why India is gold. I, I told them to make India gold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's wow. what um, wow. the uh, cover represent. And if you see the subtitle um, of a, a woman's true story of scoring the earth to uh, searching for her birth family, that says it all. 
Wow. So, wow. so wow. another reason why I have a planet Earth because this little infant is scoring the Earth to find her birth family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, mm -hmm. I hope that explains. It. <laughs> alignment. I, I hear alignment. You are on an assignment. You know, you were appointed for this this journey, this book. You know, and it's like you're definitely following the blueprint you know you're following the blueprint the time and you're listening you're listening your ears are like off the chain you know you're listening to god so you are on your way definitely but i just want to share some triggers um that you can help people with so that they can identify what that abandonment uh emotions look like mm -hmm. okay first of all here we go I'm ready Ooh. to tear it down. Come on now. Let me speak to those who feel abandoned right now, rejected. I got delivered. I got healed. And you can too. It's not impossible. It took me over 20 something years to be deliver delivered and healed from abandonment, spirit of abandonment, rejection. Those spirits are real. And that spirit lies to you and say, oh, you're not wanted. Who are you? You're nobody. You're not special. You're just a trash child. But I have news for you. That's what God wants the most. That's who God wants the most, believe it or not. Because he is here to give you life and that more abundantly. And he had to speak that over me. That spirit of abandonment is a lie. And when it causes you to feel rejected so much, it won't allow you to receive love from people who truly love you. And it also draws you to the wrong people too. those wolves, those people who want to keep taking advantage of you. But that's the reason why you have to get delivered. And you have to allow yourself to be delivered. You have to want it just like I wanted it. It took time because you got to know that I had it since I was a young girl and honestly, abandonment didn't really set in place until I came into America. Rejection. And then with my birth family, what I experienced through with, with my birth family, that heightened it even more. So let me speak to you, to those who need that healing, who need that, like, I want to feel important. I don't want to feel invisible. You are not invisible. You are not invisible. And why I tell you that is because if you look at your hands, you if you look at yourself in the mirror, you will realize why you're still living. Look at why 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 haven't you died yet? Why haven't you died yet? Ask yourself that. Why are you not dead yet? Because that spirit will also allow you to make yourself feel suicidal. And that's what abandonment look like. Abandonment tells you, kill yourself. You're nobody. Yeah. You're no one. And that's what that spirit looks like. Wow. This is this is really good. Thank you. Hi, baby. How are you? She's just adorable. Um, I, I would like to ask you a question. So if, if you got a phone call right now, let's just say or someone reached out on your website and say, I've been abducted, I need some help. How would you help that person emotionally? Hang in there don't quit encourage them that's why i provided information on human trafficking which is my human yeah. trafficking website 
yeah. and who they can reach out to. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, wow. look, if you really want out and you need help, listen, here's 1-800 numbers that I posted on my website. Please call mm -hmm. this number ASAP. There's, there's shelters you can go to, mm -hmm. food to eat. Because believe it or not, people who have been trafficked, they need all that stuff. They need shelters. They need somewhere to sleep. They need um, food to eat. They need to, you know, freshen themselves up. Yeah. And they need yeah. counseling, too, because that's trauma. Right. Right. And um, first start would be definitely um, contact the resource center, uh, the resources. And I've provided the resources on my human trafficking Inc com. Yeah, that's right. Wow. wow. Your local state has resources. Your local state has something. And um, also there's um, national um, contact information as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I just want to talk a little. I know um, we were so deep diving in deep. I got Lotus here, reach out and get some help. I got Sean, please give some red flags for the people. Uh, Lotus, stay in the in the race. Um, you know, this was very, very touching for me. Uh, just wanted to just touch a topic. Um, my daughter's going to high school. It's like right down the block, right? And I'm like, hey, I'm gonna walk you. She's like, no. But my whole point is because we are living in a society of the unknown and so many things is happening, you want to be that protector. And I'm sure for you, how are you? Let me ask you a question. How are you with your baby? I know that you have to be overprotective, right? Oh, absolutely. She changed my life. Yeah. <laughs> she yes. wow. my life. I feel like um, she's given me an opportunity that I've never had in my own life. And this is my time right. to um, guard uh, something that is very precious to me. And she really mm -hmm. put my heart up. And yes, I agree with you. Um, the, I am very protective. Um, yeah. I believe in being protective. I'm, I'm not overbearing, let them have independency, but also definitely keep your eyes on them, guard, guard them. And um, it's pretty much about educating them. Correct, you know? correct, correct. Edu I, and the one of the things that even when she grows up, I'm going to be like, please do not spend time on that cell phone when you're out and about. Pay attention. Pay attention to your surroundings. Carry mace, carry um, a little taser, whatever it is. Um, you know, you got to remember my name, my contact number. You got to remember that. So I'm going to be taking her through all that so she knows what to do right away. You know, right, right. have a cell phone, but do not misuse it when you're out and about pay attention because um children when they you know get to be certain age and they grow up yeah. they get distracted so easy and that's where they get taken advantage of you know especially mm -hmm. where their hormonal changes their life experience mm -hmm. and whatever mm -hmm. they they're going through you know mm -hmm. and um i'm a firm believer also in what you um how you dress uh do not dress ex provocative not, yeah do not show tummy uh little even yes. if it's a little bit of your breast do not show that do not show much of your legs because that is red flags those are things that is getting attention on yourself you know mm -hmm. and you stand out like a sore thumb and nowadays from even less younger than teenagers are looking like grown adults that's absolutely absolutely yeah. 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 So. Wow. Wow. Good stuff. Thank you. And I know um, there are three types of childhood abandonment um, the syndromes, you know, and I do believe we covered those like trauma. What was another one? There's a couple trauma, self neglect, I believe. A parent, sorry, parental neglect. Yeah. Right. Yes. yes. Can, can you tell us just a little bit about parental neglect? Um, parental neglect, what that looks like is when somebody's not, um, having their well-being, uh, towards the child, like when it comes to food, their medical yeah. needs, 
uh, their hygiene, yeah. all mm -hmm. that is being neglected. Um, mm -hmm. And even as far as like um, taking them to school, you know, that's co uh, considered neglection on the parents part because yeah. listen, why adopt a kid? Why even have a kid if you're not willing to take the responsibility of another innocent life? You're yeah. apparently you're a grown adult and you have you have experienced life more than that child. That child doesn't know any better. Yeah. So so this is a huge responsibility on your children when you decide to even have a child or decide to adopt. Why abuse them? Why go, why go through the phase of not feeding them, meeting yeah. their nutritional needs or whatever? Because do you know for the fact that when you don't meet a child's nutritional need, it affects them in the end as an adult? Yeah. I can't even tell you um, why till this day as an adult, uh, how, many, how many times I've gone through where uh, I get a trigger even through PTSD because um, lack of nutrition. Lack of yeah. nutrition I experienced as a child. That's mm -hmm. why they always um, um, want children who are going to school or, in, or, not, or whatever to give them the proper food because they mm -hmm. have developing brains and body and it carries on in the long term, even as an adult. Even when, when they're up to 70, 90 years old, it's so mm -hmm. important. Mental wellness, health is so important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if Thank I, you. I can tell you, um, if somebody, if let's say I'm severely hungry, all of a sudden I get a trigger. I'm severely hungry. I feel neglected. I feel abandoned when it's somebody, if I'm in a relationship with somebody and they're not meeting my needs. Mm -hmm. I'm really neglect. It's a trigger for me because right, why right. As a child, I went through that and I got to eat mm -hmm. and you don't understand where this trigger is coming from because I didn't have the proper nutrition growing up. So now it's affecting wow. an adult. Wow. Wow. Um, that's a great uh, analogy. And that's, and actually too, that's where I was, what I wanted to pull from you. So great answer, great feedback because a lot of times meeting people, people don't know what that person's went through in life, you know? And this is all about the communication. Communication is key. And and I just hope that we've learned so much from this show because abandonment, rejections, neglect, all of that comes the same. Whether Dana was just um, on the physical side and not just because she went through so much trials and tribulations, but mothers, biological mothers, you can be abandoning your children in certain scenarios if you're not paying attention. So this was really, really important to me. Um, Dana, I applaud you. I applaud your hard work. Can you just tell us when the book is, well, I see the book will be available June 18. And um, I did put the website out so how, where people can meet you. But before we close, I just want you to close us with some inspiring um, pain points and what we should be doing in the time of crisis. In the time of crisis, first stand in knowing who you are and walk in your purpose. Recognize who's surrounding you and don't listen to every voices that speak to you. Um, if you don't understand who you are, get to know who you are, then you will understand your strength. Your gift is your weapon. Mm. So if your gift is dancing, that's your weapon to defeat the enemy. If your gift is singing, that's your weapon to defeat the enemy. If your gift is to write a book and tell your story, that's your gift in defeating the enemy. 
Wow. Very intelligent, very powerful. You have so much wisdom and you definitely know how to deal with the enemy. Guys, I hope you took some notes because this is definitely a woman that knows who she are, knows where she stands in life and stand in a state of, of, of uh, adversary, you know, controversy, you know. So Dana, I do thank you guys. I thank you so much. If there's any questions for Dana, please um, feel free to give us any questions. Uh, her website's on here. I highly recommend that you purchase her book because she has more in debt in her book. I have Lotus is saying one more thing before we close. Jessica Fraser works to prevent human trafficking in Douglasville, Georgia. If you are in need in that area, thank you, Lotus. This is great stuff. You shared awareness. You broke down some triggers and what we need to look forward to. Your baby, thank you for sharing your baby with us. She is so adorable. And I know she is going to be a powerhouse just like her mom. Again, please tag and share, tag and share, tag and share. People need to hear this stuff. Co Corona, co COVID has took over the world. And we are not even hearing stories like this. Even before COVID-19, we didn't hear stories like this. We had to go somewhere to hear stories like this. I highly recommend that you share, tag. Please share this. Break the internet with this story. And not only that, purchase her book. Purchase Dana's book. Support this testimony. Support this powerful story. And, and not only that, you're going to support wisdom. You're going to tap into wisdom because evidently Dana, Dana has used her trials and tribulations to perfect her craft to know when God is speaking. And that's powerful. So you want to plug in and tap into that book because that book is going to make you shine like a diamond. It's going to make you shine like a diamond. I'm just telling you, I have not even goosebumps but I have the vibration that I know what I have by just listening to her story. And I know that book is going to be powerful. Dana, before we close, guys, I thank you for watching us. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Lotus, Sean, Larry, Elder Karen, Elder Sharon. Thank you for tuning in. But before we close, Dana, last words. You close us out. Last word with something powerful and encouraging. Well, guys, I thank you. I'm very humble uh, that you all were here to listen to me. Um, I pray that everyone goes out there and really discover who they are, because once you know who you are, the enemy cannot stop you. That's one thing I do know and understand. Your identity is your very own key to your own life. Mm, wow. Well, with that says over and out. Thank you so much for tuning in to the She Exists broadcast. I want to shout out to the Winning Evening News. Shout out to Lotus Roche, Unstoppable, the Did You Know, the Apostle Keisha Jordan Real Talk, the We Empowerment coming off mute, Roslyn, the whole tribe, guys. Thank you so much for your support. We are coming to give information, leadership, plug into any one of us, any one of us. Thank you and have a good day. Dana, don't go nowhere, please.